Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano catch-up where we'll take a look around at some of the main news, items, and events around the Cardano ecosystem right now. I know videos still aren't back to the regular scheduling, but I should be getting there soon. The project that we have been working on for a while now is very close to a beta. I'll talk a bit about that later on in the video. We'll also look at World Mobile, all the updates that they have been announcing with the first Aerosat going live. A lot of new air nodes this week in a new country. We'll look at some of the DEX activity out there with AxoTrade announcing that the testnet is coming tomorrow also genius yield i had an interview a few updates on that and some new dexes coming into the system that are going to be cross-chain dexes updates from liquid finance the cardano foundation nfts a lot of different things i will put timestamps below give the video a like share it out comment questions or even for the algorithm i do appreciate it let's jump into it Okay, we'll kick it off with World Mobile, and I'm sure most people at this stage know already that the first Aerostat was, went up in Mozambique last, or the week before last, actually, and they're still doing different tests and stuff like that, so we will get more updates as the weeks go on, but this was a very big milestone for World Mobile to have the first one up in the air and signals that they are on the right path and this one really will be a big test to show what is possible with it so looking forward to the next one and the next one and hitting the milestones of 10 20 of these up flying and providing connectivity the other big one that we've seen this week was if you follow wmt scan which gives all the latest updates and actually if we look at it here you can see that Pakistan has now come up on the map and the air nodes have jumped to 810 total air nodes. And this is because 333 in Pakistan have now been shown up on the map. You can see the daily consumption and the unique users all took a really big jump with the addition here. And I would say this is still only the start of what is going to come with World Mobile. If you don't follow WMT Scan, it's wmtscan.com. You can see all the stats around. These are the revenue for the air nodes in Zanzibar, the consumption and the air node host revenue. Part of this goes back to the weekly buybacks we see on the WMT token. And I will leave links to all of this down below. They did put up this video here, just an animation of showing the different air nodes that have now gone up in Pakistan. To, or Sorry, that was Zanzibar. And now you look at introducing Pakistan and you'll see it coming up with all the different air nodes that they've introduced there. Probably getting close to the time where I'll need to try and get Mickey back on for another update and chat about World Mobile too. But good to see lots of progression there. So something else that came out today was AxoTrade and T-21 from actually one hour before recording this video. So if this is in hours, this means that the public testnet for AxoTrade will go live tomorrow. Some people who are around the community for a good while now will remember AxoTrade was initially Maladex. And I've had Yarrick on the channel before to talk about what they're trying to do. And I am excited about what they're trying to do because really they look to be bringing everything you can do on a centralized exchange all the vast types of orders you can do trying to bring them onto cardano dexes and really bring them into the DeFi space anybody who was initially delegating to their iso pools and hasn't done the kyc yet i would say now would be a good time to go in and complete it so on a very high level overview go in connect your wallet you will have to if you're using a hardware wallet i think you have to send one ada it does it step by step if you're not doing a hardware wallet then it just connects you have to sign the message then you have to go through kyc which is a bit of a task and if you are connecting more than one wallet if you had more than one in the ispo then what you can do is you have to set them up individually under this one account and then you have to send 35 ada to that now it does take you through step by step in the process and even after you're sending it you have to take a screen screen grab of yourself where you put it up for more of the visual looking at your face to make sure it's you doing it so it does take a bit of time to do it but with testnet to starting up tomorrow then mainnet hopefully isn't too far away so it would be good to try and get them steps done if you haven't already so looking forward to trying that out and you can expect a video on that tomorrow or over the next few days once I get in to have a play around with testnet 
And then another decks that has announced they will be expanding to Cardano is one that's already live on IOTA, and that is Tangle Swamp. Now it is an EVM deck, so the way they are going to be working on Cardano is they will be launching on Milkameda, which is a sidechain for Cardano. But if you follow Milkameda recently, they brought out wrapped smart contracts. So that means that you can interact with anything on Milkameda using your Cardano wallet. So once these guys are live, I will be sure to go in, do tutorials around how that all works. And it's great to see the ecosystem expanding. They are going to be different than the AMM DEXs that we have live right now. They're going to be a concentrated liquidity DEX. If you've seen my interview with Lars Brunis from Genius Yields during the week, we talked a bit about different types of DEXs and different types of orders and stuff like that. So you can check that one out to, to hear a bit more about what these types of DEXs will be. But I will be covering Tangle Swap once they are live and if there is a testnet that I can get access to the testnet too. And just as I mentioned, the interview with Lars, so Genius Yield is another DEX that has been around Cardano for a while now. They are in a alpha testnet, I would say at this point. I have got a quick look at it, and I think Pete done a video showing what it all looks like too, if you want to check that out. But I talked with Lars last week, really good talk about what Genius are doing, what they're going to be doing going forward with maybe options and LP positions and aggregators. So lots of stuff to come there. So I will be keeping an eye on it. And we said we will catch up in around mainnet launch. They haven't announced the dates for that yet, but hopefully not too far away. When we're on DEXs, Wing Riders put out an update there that they've made some improvements, some, I suppose, UX, so user experience updates to make better caching, faster loading of pages. I have noticed at times it had been slow as well as they say 3x faster batcher speed. So this is when your orders are submitted to the DEX, how quickly they are batched and sent back to you. Haven't been able to test any of that out yet, but good to see the updates coming out there. Then we look at the Cardano Foundation is changing their delegation strategy. So this is where the Cardano Foundation has their own ADA, what they got initially, and they delegate that out to community stake pools. So up to this point, there's been certain rules about how that's done. It was every three months, they delegated it out and changed who the delegation was for. People could apply for the delegation. And I think it was always in around the 15 million. If you look at pools.pm, you can see all the pools that it's currently delegated to. So you can see all of these and roughly 15 million ADA into all of these pools. And then if we look at the article, how it's going to change. So the delegation duration is going to change and it's going to go from three months to 12 months, which I think is a good aspect that it really gives a pool a lot of time to build on getting that delegation and try and attract other people into the pool because within three months, the big delegation comes in, the pool starts to get loads of or not loads or loads of blocks, which is really good. But then as soon as the big delegation leaves, then they go back down to what they were at. And sometimes it's not enough time to really take advantage of that and to try and attract other people in to make the pool sustainable. So as well, the delegation packages are going to change. So they're going to reduce the number of pools that they delegate to and increase the size of the packages. Not sure what that's going to be, as you can see there, currently at 15 million. So it looks like it's going to be a bit more there. Then there's the controversial point about they're going to remove the single pool requirement. So up to this, you had to be a single pool operator to apply for this, and they are removing this. Now, I don't think they're removing this to start giving it out to massive multi-farms or Binance or anything like that. I think it is in line with looking at developers in the ecosystem who might have two pools, maybe for different reasons or whatever the reasons are, but I think potentially they could have left that out and kept it at the single pool operator but we'll see where it goes. I don't expect it to be given to people with loads of different pools or anything like that. Maybe developers or people providing to the ecosystem that have two pools, potentially three. We'll keep an eye on it and see where it goes. Selection process as well now is going to be handpicked by the team based on data and insights they have. So they'll be looking at who is contributing to the development of Cardano or to spreading the word about Cardano and trying to really help them in the process of giving them ADA in their stake pool. It's not giving them ADA, it's putting, delegating the ADA, which really helps the stake pool be more sustainable. The expectations and stuff like that are kind of the same, that basically if you change the fees, if you all of a sudden get all of this ADA delegated to your pool and you hike the fees so you can earn more, then the delegation will be pulled, which is very fair to have. The final point is they're also going to be having their own stake pool, so CAG, 
is going to be the cardano foundation stake pool they are only setting up one pool they say so it's that they can get a genuine understanding of topologies building from source pre-releases hard fork preparations and service resources and lots more things with that comes with being a part of the network and seeing firsthand how it all works so we'll keep you posted on that and when the process comes up the delegation the changes and how much each pool is going to get to then we look at liquid finance so they put this out yesterday or is it today actually or two days ago about um, learn all about v2's new features and infrastructure and if we take a look at it here i won't go deep into it here because there is a lot of information in it but i will leave a link to it down below if you want to check it out so it talks about all the new features that are going to come with v2 for liquid finance so this is pooled lending on cardano so this is there's no set durations on your time or the interest rates can change depending on supply and demand so if you look at the bringing in borrow caps supply caps efficiency mode so there's other ones as well isolation mode so you can decide which your assets can be used for what loans they can be used against lots of other bits off chain rewrites so like i was saying i will maybe do an individual video looking at some of these and maybe comparing to other lending platforms across cardano too bringing in catalyst voting so they will be using the ada that's there to actually vote in catalyst we've seen minswap done this in the last vote and what they done was allowed the community to come together and decide which proposals would be voted on just on Catalyst, I also seen a comment on Twitter from Danny that the next round of proposals should be out by the end of this year. So people will be able to start submitting proposals by then. I'll try and find that tweet, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to throw it in here on top or not. Next, we look at some of the NFT side of things. So JPEG Soar introduced this new feature called Sweep a while ago, where you can select multiple NFTs that you want to buy in one transaction. So you go on and you start ticking all the ones that you want to buy. And you can see this person here bought 85 book.io Gutenberg Bibles. So the total was 83.7K ADA, which is a massive amount of ADA to put in in one one bias was on one sing or not, i was going to say one single asset but it is 85 assets but it's 85 of the bibles this is one of the big advantages with cardano transactions is that you can have multiple assets in one transaction so this would have been all been able to do it in one single transaction on cardano and on book.io so friday the 13th they put this out last friday saying that the next Friday, which is the, let me look here, the 20th, two days from this video, the book token will finally go public. So they had their sale a while back, but the launch is going to happen on Friday. So you should be able to get your tokens if you participated in any of the sales or the swap overs. And they're having their first mint that you can only use the book token to get involved in it. So best of luck to the team. Great to see that it is getting to this, this stage and bringing out utility straight away for the this for this sale if you want this book you can only use the book token to actually get into it on nfts lots of talk about nfts are dead in different times but dirt birds lots of people in the community will be familiar with them i will be having a chat with dave in the next few weeks not sure when exactly we still have to nail down a date but i'm looking forward to diving in and seeing what they've done because they've built up a really solid community over there they had a sale last Friday of 8,000 NFTs for the outposts and they were 495 ADA each and it sold out in four hours. So that shows, I suppose, the strength of the community they have there and the interest that maybe NFTs aren't just completely dead yet. We then look at Cornucopius. So if you're holding the Kopi token, the staking on Wi-Fi, that vault had closed a few weeks ago. They have opened up a new vault now. So if you hold Kopi, then you're able to stake that over on Vi Finance. And Rob put out a good post here, probably last week at this point, was it? Let's see the date. So the 16th, actually only two days ago, talking about what's going on with Cornucopius right now and where they are in terms of the technology and UE so they're at the minute they're on unreal engine 5.1 they are upgrading to unreal engine 5.3 which will bring as he says here significant updates that they simply could not go live without so the versions that will come out in the next few weeks and months i suppose years are going to be at least on 5.3 probably over the next few years they will continually upgrade like this and it's not just like upgrading a software package on your computer there's a lot of work that has to go into upgrading because 
a lot of the rendering and how models are done and everything like that needs to be completely redone in terms of all being re-rendered with the new upgrades that come in in unreal engine but looking forward to seeing what that looks like when we can get access to it too still haven't been able to get access to racing but uh hopefully that's not too far away too so then we will look at two last things and this is if you were watching the bitcoin chart on monday you will have seen that it went from under twenty-eight thousand to over thirty thousand. i think thirty thousand seven hundred was the top all in a matter of seconds and that was down to coinbase or down to coin telegraph and what they done was they put out a tweet on monday so this is the link to the article don't even need to get into it but they put out a tweet saying that there was a bitcoin spot etf approved and they said it was the um, iShares one which was blackrock and lots of people expect with the connections blackrock have that they will potentially be the first one to be approved but it turns out it was just a rumor and they jumped the gun but they put it out spread like wildfire and the markets went crazy price spiked up and then shot back down after it actually to be fair the price held fairly well after it in terms of we're still at maybe twenty eight and a half thousand dollars right now even after this showing what can happen but it turns out that they were looking in a telegram group that they use for discovering news articles seen a random post from someone saying that the sec approves the iShares bitcoin spot etf and they went and posted that straight on their twitter without getting confirmation that it was actually legitimate that it was real so in the rush to be the first to put it out they put it out and they've done a serious amount of damage to their own name potentially legal side i don't know may come back on it for what happened with someone of their size spreading it out there and we'll see what happens but one thing it does show the pent-up interest that is there that if we do get a spot etf approved what potentially could happen with the markets closing it out then the reason i suppose that i haven't been putting out videos just as often lots of people probably know myself and patty were working on something the last the last probably two three months at this point a dex aggregator and there'll be lots of other features coming along the way too very close to a beta coming out there will be no token or anything like that lots of questions around that but we're just putting out a platform for the community got a new team member two weeks ago now at this point maybe dave lots of people if you're on twitter will be familiar with him really good developer so looking forward to getting that out to the community hopefully in the next few days in a beta version and we will build on top of that as we go then thanks for watching guys i will talk to you soon